to assemble the zipper compartment that sits above the train case. You're going to need to your your sorry, you're going to need both of your zipper compartment exterior pieces and your lining pieces. On the wrong side of the exterior pieces, you're going to make a mark along the top wider edge. So you'll see it, there is um, an increase in the width as you move to the top of the piece. So at the top of the piece, one inch in from the, the corner here, you're going to make a mark on the wrong side. And you do that for both pieces. And then on your lining pieces, you're going to do the same thing, except that you're going to make the marks on the right side. Now you're going to need your your 22 inch uh, zipper compartment zipper. And we have all of our center marks that we made earlier, but I'm now going to make a mark at the center of our zipper, which is at the 11 inch mark from either end, since the zipper is 22 inches long. Um, you could be using either a single or a double pull zipper. I like to use a double pull zipper. I just find it easier to open the zipper compartment. But if you've chosen to use a single, that'll be fine. So with one lining piece right side facing up, you're going to place the zipper also right side facing up. Make sure that you're lining up those center marks. And just use a couple of clips or pins to hold it in place. And then you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to just do a quick basting stitch to attach the zipper to the lining piece, but you're only going to baste in between these marks. So don't sew past the one inch marks that you made at the corners. You have to just baste on the inside of those marks. And you can baste with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So the zipper is basted to the lining piece. And what I've done as well is I've sewn across the coil at both ends of my zipper. And I've moved the pulls out of the way. This way I don't have to keep moving them back and forth as I'm sewing. So now you're going to need one of your exterior pieces. And you're going to place it over top with the wrong side facing up. And make sure that you have that wider top edge along the zipper at the top. So you're going to first line up those center marks and then pin or clip them together. And then you're going to pin the rest, but do not include the zipper in this one inch portion. You don't want that to be included when we're sewing. And you can clip it out, out, of, the, out of the way for now. Um, but when you're sewing, make sure that you're reaching in in between the layers and pulling the the portion of the zipper out of this one inch of space here at the end, at the at the corner. You do not want to include the zipper in the seam allowance in these areas. So I'm just going to pull it out of the way and then clip the layers together. Okay, and then I'm going to sew through the layers here with one quarter inch seam allowance and make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. And again, remember to pull, reach in and pull the zipper out so it's not sewn into the seam allowance in this one inch portion at each of the top corners. Now that we've sewn this seam, we can Flip the zipper compartment pieces so they are wrong sides together. 
And then we're going to press the zipper compartment pieces away from the zipper. And then you'll see that this portion, the one inch portion, my zipper is not sewn into that seam. And then I flip it around and I also like to press from the lining side as well. Now we are not going to top stitch the seam allowance yet. We're going to attach the second uh, lining and exterior pieces to this side of the zipper. We're repeating exactly the same steps. Placing the lining piece right side up, <clears throat> sorry. And placing your zipper over top with the center marks aligned, also right side up. Start by basting in place in between those one inch marks. And then just going to go and do a quick basting stitch with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, the second lining piece is basted to the zipper. Now we're placing the exterior piece. Again, it's the wider end that's at the top here. Lining up those center marks, and you have your exterior wrong side facing up. And then you make sure that your zipper is not included in the one inch portion at the top corner. And then again, you go ahead and sew through all the layers with one quarter inch seam allowance, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And now again, we're going to press the layers away from the zipper, exactly like we did the first time. Let me turn it around this way. So it's the same steps that we used, that we followed for these two pieces. And again, I'm gonna press from the right side and also the wrong side. Turn this around. Now we're going to close up the sides of our zipper compartment, but we're going to be leaving the bottom at the bottom edges unsewn. And if you've um, ever made any sort of uh, zipper pouch before, this will be familiar to you. So we're going to flip the exterior pieces so they are right sides together. So put your pull. You have to leave an opening somewhere in the zip and the zipper for turning. So I'm just going to leave a little opening like this. And I am going to clip along the edges. So when you're doing this, you want to have you want to have these seams to be uh, to be lined up properly. And I usually either open the seam allowance or I push it towards the lining side. Um, either one will work. 
I find it, because it's a one quarter inch seam allowance, I actually find it easier to just push them towards the lining. But it's a nicer effect if you can open them. So we're going to first clip at the seams, making sure that they're aligned. And then the bottom corners at either end. So you have lining pieces right side together and exterior pieces right side together. Okay, and then just another clip in the middle. And then we're doing the same thing on this side. Now, when you're clipping, you'll note that I don't want to sew over my zipper in this step. So the zipper is folded in towards the center. And if you, you're worried about it getting in the seam, you can uh, just pin it to the, the exterior piece. So again, lining up this side seam. And then clipping the corners together. And then clipping in the middle. So now we're going to sew from this corner all the way down to the bottom corner and make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end and again make sure that you're not sewing your zipper in that seam. Same thing on this side, start at the corner, sew down to the other corner, backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay so now we have uh, some sort of tube here and I'm going to get you to open the zipper as much as possible without pulling those pulls off, of course. So you have a tube that sort of looks like this. And to make this step easier, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press open that seam allowance at the bottom edge of the exterior. You can leave the lining alone for now. Let's just press this open a little bit. And also this one. So what we're doing now is probably the most difficult part of the pattern. We're going to attach the zipper compartment to the zipper of the train case. And what you'll do is you'll insert this. So for now, let's keep the zipper uh, zipped, fully zipped. And if you cut your fabric in a way where you have a preferred um, area for the front of the bag, make sure that you do have that placed at the front, so across from the back panel. If it doesn't matter if both sides are identical, like I've done, it doesn't really matter. So you want, you want these seams to be lined up with the, the center marks on the curved ends. So you have your train case and your exterior or right sides together. And you want to add a clip here. And then we're doing the same thing. I'm just going to pull this away from the center. Okay, and then same thing for the center mark along this curved edge. We're lining that up with that side seam, clipping. And then lining up the center marks at the front and the back and clipping those together. So I'm just going to finish clipping all the way around. And then before we start sewing, we're going to open up the zipper the, for the train case. We're going to open it up all the way because if you try to sew with the zipper uh, zipped up like this, it just, the, the, the train case is very structured and it'll make it more difficult for you to sew this step. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to pause and just finish clipping. Okay, so the the Tranquet zipper has been clipped to the entire bottom of my zipper compartment. So now I'm going to reach in and I want to open up the zipper, hopefully not removing any of my clips because that would be a little bit frustrating. I have to find my zipper pulls first. Where are they hiding? There they are. So I'm going to open them all the way. So I want them one here, one here. And then what that will allow us to do is to not have the train case um, interfering too much when we're sewing this next part. Okay, I have one open and the other one. I'm trying to not remove my clips. If you do happen to remove a clip, just go ahead and put it back. Okay, so I see I kind of moved things around. I'm just going to readjust. I like to have uh, as precise as possible a seam allowance for the zipper because um, it, it'll really show if your, your seam allowance um, varies uh, when sewing your train case zipper. Okay, I think this is good. So now we're gonna go over to the machine and attach this. Now in the instructions, I tell you to switch to a zipper foot. I have a really narrow foot on right now. So for this initial step, I'm going to leave my regular foot on because it does give me a little more control. If you have a really wide regular foot, you should switch to your zipper foot for this step. So first, I'm just uh, sewing this on quickly and I'm going to use a one quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm starting by the back panel. The back panel area is probably where you have the thickest layers. So I'm just sewing this on, not with a very long basting stitch, sort of a, I think I have a stitch length of five selected. My machine goes up to a six, um, but four or five would be a great stitch length. We're actually going to sew a second time which uh, with a regular stitch length. Now when you get to your zipper pulls, if you find that they are in the way, you can move them. I'm going to reach in there and just scooch this one over for a little bit. And then I'm going to, once I've passed this area, I'm going to put it back in place. So as I'm moving it, I'm sort of moving my zipper tape a bit, but I readjust it so that I make sure that I'm using a consistent seam allowance. So now I want to put this back. Now imagine if your zipper case was, the zipper was shut the entire way and you were dealing with the bulk and the structure, it would be very difficult to sew this step. So by opening the zipper all the way, it really does help quite a lot. Okay, so I'm going to continue sewing all the way around. Okay, so we have the train case zipper attached to the bottom of the zipper compartment. Now we need to sew our train case pocket. That will become the top of the train case. So we're doing the same thing. Now, one thing that's very important is the, zip, the train case pocket upper piece. You want that to be attached across from so that when you open you want to open your train case and you want the zipper to be at this edge so you're doing the lower piece attached to the the train case back panel and the upper piece is attached to the front of the train case and we're lining up center marks and 
clipping that in place. So again, lining up the center marks. And then clipping the rest in place. So I'm going to pause, I'll finish adding my clips, and then we're going to go over to the machine and sew this together. Now before we start sewing, make sure that you have your zipper foot attachment. And if you can't remember the last time you changed your needle, make sure you're starting with a fresh, sharp needle. I actually, I say this, but um, I did forget to switch my needle out. Hopefully it will be okay. If it breaks, then we can all have a good laugh. So I'm again, I'm going to start at the train case back panel. And when I'm sewing this step, I actually want to get as close as I can to a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So the area at the back panel is actually the thickest part. So not knowing uh, your machine, um, if you do find that it's having trouble getting just through this part, um, you can try hammering your seam or you can uh, hand crank it. I've Sometimes I've just hand cranked out of fear of breaking a needle. Um, I'm using the HD9, so it tends to just sail through the layers. And again, I'm just going to move those zipper pulls out of the way, which is get, becoming increasingly difficult to do as I have more layers here to deal with. So do your best to get as close as you can to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And my zipper pull is really being very difficult. Don't rush through this part. It is a bit of tricky sewing, as you can see, so take your time. It is the most difficult part of this pattern, is sewing this step. pull is a little bit stuck. Okay, I don't usually have this much trouble with this part. Just just so you know. <laughs> it's just being extremely difficult right now. Okay, so I've pushed it back out of the way. And if you see that there's puckers happening, again, I just try to like pull away from the needle and flatten with my fingers without sewing my fingers. So go very slowly here. It's just the corners, the curved corners, that are a little bit trickier. The rest is actually not that bad. Once you get to this straight part, you'll see that it's actually quite easy. And I often have to stop around the curve and just push this back so that you're, you're basically pushing the train case out of your way as you're sewing. Now, the reason why I'm using uh, a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for the train case here is because a zipper, zipper tape doesn't really have much structure to it. And so with the weight of the zipper compartment above the train case zipper, it causes the train case zipper to collapse. So the larger the seam allowance, uh, the, the less collapsing you're going to see because the coil itself is quite strong. Usually I sew zippers with one quarter inch seam allowance, but this one is an exception. Okay, so we're getting to the straight edge now. So they, these, these curved ends, they are definitely the most difficult part. 
So take your time and do adjust like you saw me doing. I am not rushing through this at all. I take I take my time. For this. Okay, and we're about to get to the other third, so you're going to do exactly like I did for the other side. Take your time, adjust the train case, tuck it under, and flatten and pull away from the zipper to avoid puckers, and move your zipper pull out of the way as you get to the back panel. So I've attached the entire uh, train case zipper pocket, and you might want to at this point, before you we continue, you're going to want to just flip this and have a look at your train case zipper just to make sure that you're you're quite happy with uh, you know what the seam allowance that you sewed at maybe there's a spot where you uh, you missed um, so then you can just go ahead and and do some little touch-ups just to make sure that you're 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 happy with how the the pocket went on to the zipper the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take the remaining uh, train case bottom lining piece. This one should have fusible fleece on the wrong side. And we're going to attach it to the bottom of the train, train case compartment lining piece. And we're going to follow the same method that we've been using by starting to uh, pin the center marks first. going to use clips. So you start by doing the four center marks and then you clip everything else in between those center center marks. When I clip the corners here, the rounded ends, I open up the seam allowance at that side seam. Like this. And then I clip it. And do the same for this one. And the seam allowance and clip. Okay, then I'm just going to pause and I'll finish clipping all the rest. And when we sew this bottom, there's a couple of changes we're going to make and I have a, a special technique that I use for uh, leaving an opening for turning. So I finished clipping the uh, the train case bottom lining piece. There's a few things that I would like you to remember when we're sewing this part. Um, first, make sure that you switch to your regular foot on your machine when you're sewing this part. You're going to also increase the seam allowance when you're sewing this lining piece because we don't want it the uh, baggy lining inside of our zipper compartment. So I'm going to use uh, a half inch seam allowance, but if you find that still too baggy, you can increase to five eighths of an inch. When we're sewing on this bottom piece, we're going to do the same thing as we did when we sewed on the train case, uh, the line, bo train case bottom lining piece in the train case itself. And we're going to be clipping at these curved edges so that everything sits nicely and avoiding and to avoid puckers. The other thing we're going to do is we need to leave uh, an opening for turning the, the whole bag right side out. Now normally I would just say leave an opening, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to start near the curved edge along one of the straight edges and you're going to back stitch and you're going to use your regular stitch length and sew all the way around. Once you've come past this curved edge here, you're going to stop, you're going to back stitch, then you're going to increase your stitch length as far as it'll go to a basting stitch, and then sew across this long edge until you reach the back stitching that you started with, and just sew with a basting stitch in this edge. And then um, I will show you, we're gonna press it open and I'll show you how it helps us uh, close that opening in the in after we've turned the bag right side out. 
So once again, we have the train case bottom lining piece on the bed of your machine. And I'm starting at the edge where there's the long straight edge, right near one of the curved sides. We're starting with a seam allowance of half an inch. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to backstitch. So I'm showing you how I'm leaving the opening with the basting stitches like I just mentioned. And then also, I did not get my scissors ready. Because we're going to be clipping in the seam allowance, you want to have your scissors ready. And so you remove clips a little bit at a time and then you just clip into that seam allowance only along the bottom of the zipper compartment. So you're not clipping the train case bottom piece, you're just clipping into the seam allowance of the bottom of the zipper compartment. And then you can see how it, it helps keep, see how it's flipping up. So we just clip. And then it starts to lay flat. And I always go very slowly when I'm sewing any of the train case bottoms on. So just make sure you, you stop and you adjust the position of your of the top part here because it is heavy. So I'm going to continue sewing all the way around until I get to the, uh, the longer straight edge where I started. So I'm now at the longer straight edge where I started. Here's my back stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move. So I'm just going to leave an opening. I, I'm not measuring here, but it's roughly seven, eight inches maybe. And I'm going to do some back stitching. Then I'm going to increase my seam allowance all the way to six, which is the maximum on my machine. And then I'm going to sew across until I get to the back stitching where I started. Okay, and then the threads. And then I'll show you what we are going to do next. So here's the area where we have our basting stitches. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to press the seam allowance open along the area where we have our basting stitches. So start from one side, flip it over, and press open from the other side. So what this is doing is it's folding the edges for us where we're going to need to sew the opening shut. The next thing we're going to do before we turn the bag uh, right side out is we're just going to trim the seam allowance, but you're not trimming here where we have those basting stitches. You're just going to trim the rest. I ended up using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance for these instead of half inch. Um, I usually do half inch, but I wanted to try taking in a little bit more just to see how that seam allowance worked out. So it's important to not trim here, uh, otherwise I just find it a little bit more difficult to close that opening. Okay. Now you'll take your seam ripper and you're just going to remove those basting stitches. Make sure you don't go past into your back stitching. And I don't have it. This is not a very sharp seam ripper, so enjoy this. <laughs> I'm trying very much not to damage my fabric because I forgot to get my very sharp seam ripper to do this. 
and this one's very dull. This normally is much easier to, to open, but I'm using a very sharp, very sorry, very dull seam ripper. Okay, so now we have our opening, and now you can reach in and turn your bag right side out. Usually the bottom is the most difficult part to turn. Once you have the bottom of the train case out, it, it's definitely much easier. So obviously this needs a really good press, <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that just yet. What I'm going to do is just show you now how easy it is to close the opening because of the pressing that we did. So you can see now that the edges are nicely folded so you can just clip them together. So you have two options. You can sew this, <clears throat> you, you can sew it shut by hand or you can go over to your machine and sew it shut with your machine. If you do choose to, obviously if you do it by hand, it's a much nicer finish. But if you choose to go with your sewing machine, make sure you're starting where you have that back stitching and back stitch a little bit. And then sew as close as you can get to the edge, making sure that you're sewing through both of the folded edges. And then stop where you have your basting stitches here and do a little back stitch here. Sorry, your base, your back stitch, where you have your back stitching here, that's where you want to stop and you want to back stitch again. So, so I've sewn the um, the opening shut, and I'm just going to now be able to tuck that lining inside of the zipper compartment. <clears throat> Sorry. Like so. And we are going to top stitch around, but the first thing that we're going to do now is. And I've written in the pattern that this is an, an optional step because depending on your machine, it may really, really not like top stitching this edge. But if you can do it, I highly recommend that you do it because if you don't top stitch along a zipper, uh, especially with this mesh, it can easily get caught in your zipper when you're opening and closing your train case and you want to avoid that if possible. I'm going to show you how I do it <laughs> at the machine. I do realize that it looks very awkward because you have to maneuver this train case around, but it's really not too bad. It will get a little bit thick here along the back panel of the train case and use the same tips that I mentioned earlier. You can try hammering the seam down or you can hang crank along the most uh, thicker parts, which is going to be here and here. Okay, so for this part, make sure that your train case is open all the way. And I like to start uh, the top stitching with uh, by starting at the, the, the back panel. I have a little thread here that is bothering me. Just take that out. So I start the middle and I go really slowly when I'm doing this top stitching because there's a few things that you need to do. Uh, you need to reach underneath every once in a while and really make sure that you're pulling away from the foot so that you don't have any uh, fabric bunching or you know the top stitching ends up not looking so great because your mesh is as uh, folded uh, in the top stitching. So you want to stop frequently and make sure that you pull away from the foot on both sides. Um, also, when you're going around top stitching around these curved edges, you're going to, need, going to need to stop and readjust so that you don't have puckers in your top stitching. So now I'm approaching the area where we have our zipper tabs. This is a thicker area, so go slowly.
and also make sure that your zipper pull uh, isn't caught under the needle. Now I'm going to have to squeeze this train case in under. Thankfully the area here under my machine is quite big. top stitching the uh, seam allowance along the zipper here. Uh, you're first going to top stitch all the way around with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance uh, away from the zipper. We then need to create a channel for our frame so we're going to sew a another line, a second line of top stitching all the way around and you want that top stitching to be about half an inch away from the original line of top stitching and be mindful of the marks that we have for our straps because we are going to sew them on uh, just beneath that top stitching. So if you're sewing too close to that the top mark here for the handle then you're going too far down. The the frame is very thin so it doesn't need a very wide channel. So you can see that they're very thin. Okay so first time all the way around with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and then again a second time about half an inch from that original uh, line of top stitching. So I've done the first bit of top stitching at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and now I need to go in half an inch from that first seam first sorry from that first line of top stitching. So what I like to do is um, I like to pick a spot so I use a ruler and I measure where half an inch so half an inch is about here and then I pick something as a guide uh, if you have a measurement on your plate here that uh, you can use as a guide so I have a 30 millimeter guideline here that I'm going to follow so the edge of my zipper will be here if you don't have uh, a guideline that far out you can use a piece of washi tape and just uh, temporarily put a piece of tape there and follow that as your guide. Or if you're lucky and your, uh, your, your machine has one of those seam guide attachments, you can use that. And then I just make sure that as I'm doing the second line of top stitching that I'm following that guideline. I have my two lines of top stitching and so this part is done for now. We're going to set this aside and we're going to sew up our handles. So the first thing you're going to do you're, is you're going to draw a line on the wrong side, down the center. And because we're not using fabric, we can't press cork, so we're going to fold and sew the handles. So we're going to be folding in half towards that center line and sewing down the center of about one eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less. But just remain, whatever seam allowance you use from that center line, just make sure that you're consistent. So about one eighth of an inch or slightly less than one eighth of an inch. And so we're gonna do that for both handles. Okay, so we're gonna start along one side of the center line and fold this half of the strap so that it is wrong sides together and this, this raw edge of the strap is right at the center line. 
Start by back stitching. And then fold and sew down the entire length. When I get to the end, I just lift and rotate. So keep your foot lifted. And then just fold this part in so that now the raw edges are meeting in at the center and then go over to the other side and then you're sewing down all along this edge Get to the end, make sure that you back stitch again. And now repeat the same thing for the second strap. So now we're going to make some marks on the straps. I use a pencil and I make some very faint marks because I find pencil uh, erases very easily from cork. So do it on the right side, marks on the right side, two inches along the top and the bottom edge, two inches from this edge. And then do that at both ends of each strap piece. Then you're going to fold them in half with the raw edges hidden in the middle. So start by lining up those two inch marks and you're folding in half along the entire length. Again, at this end, make sure those two inch marks are lined up. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the machine and you start sewing at the two inch mark at one end and you sew with one eighth of an inch seam allowance along those folded edges all the way, make sure that you back stitch and then sew all the way down to the other uh, two inch mark, stop, back stitch again and you're also going to do the same thing for the second strap piece. So the handle should look like this and there'll be an area here where you did not sew, it'll be uh, the area that we're going to sew to the bag. So I'm just going to set one aside and you're going to be attaching these and sewing them through both the exterior and the lining. It's just to make the, uh, the handles a bit more solid if they're well attached to both. Um, you can use either glue or a little piece of double sided tape. I'm going to use double sided tape because it's faster. I can start sewing right away, but if you don't have double-sided tape, you can use fabric glue. Actually, I'm gonna make sure that I don't sew through the tape. So I'm just putting this in the center. And then I want these two corners to be lined up with the two. So there's one mark here, 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 and here in a square shape. I want these two bottom corners to be lined up with those two bottom corner marks, like this. And then press so that it's glued in place. And then you should see that the, cor the marks here and here are lined up with the outer edges of the strap. So don't bother gluing this piece yet because it, it will be in the way while you're trying to sew. So now you're going to sew this in place with a square one inch box of stitching. Um, if you're not sure if you can be that precise, uh, go ahead and draw very lightly your one inch box with a ruler and a pencil that can be erased. So I'm gonna go over to the machine now and I'm going to sew this in place. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Here's the close up of the stitching for one handle attached to the bag. I'm now repeating the same thing and 
adding a piece of tape to the opposite end of that first handle right along the center with the backing and then again I'm just going to follow those marks that we made as our guides and then press hard and then again sewing it in place with a one inch one inch box of stitching here we have one handle attached now we're going to repeat exactly the same steps and attach the second handle to the other side so you're following exactly the same method as we just used to attach this second handle once we have our handles attached we're very nearly done our bag we will now attach the zipper ends and insert the frame inside the bag now you can insert the frame and then attach your zipper ends um, for this for the video I'm going to um, attach the zipper ends first only because it'll make it easier for me to show you how to install them if the frame isn't in the bag so you can um, trim the zipper tape according to whatever length you like to have I like to trim it when it's the zipper tape I like to trim about one inch past the edge of the bag here okay so I'm just gonna make a quick mark verify it's a tiny bit more okay and then I do the same on the other side so I measure one inch from the edge of the bag. Okay, and then you're going to trim the zipper tape and it's really important that you seal the ends of the zipper where you've cut it. So you can either use fray check, which looks like this, or you can melt it with a lighter. I always melt uh, the zippers with a lighter because it's instant, whereas fray check you have to sort of wait for it to dry. It is a really scary part when your bag is finished to start trimming away at that zipper because you don't want to make a mistake. And now we want to uh, insert the the zipper into the zipper ends and to do that first you can practice so if you're looking at the zipper from the wrong side you're going to be folding in that zipper tape like this so that it's about all the same width as the coil itself and then you slip that cap on and then I use a very carefully used my my seam ripper to sort of make sure it's tucked in all the way at the end. So you need to add some glue before you add the zipper end, but I wanted to have a look first to see if I like it. So you need to glue the zipper ends onto the ends of your zipper, and I just use a drop of E6000 inside the metal cap. Then I fold in my zipper tape again and insert my zipper into the cap. Again, making sure that it's going all the way in. And then I use my, I have a little teeny turner screwdriver and I take one of the little screws and I insert the screw. a bit of trouble here. These are really really tiny screws so they can be a little bit of a challenge to get in there. And apparently holding on to your screwdriver is also challenging. Okay so once you've done the one you do exactly the same thing and you attach the second uh, zipper end to the other end of your zipper. The zipper ends it in place. Now the last thing to do is to insert our frame. Now the frame does come with these rubber tips 
and I'll be honest and tell you that I removed those rubber tips because I just they just don't allow the frames to slide in the channel easily. However, you don't want to damage your fabric. So if you do decide to remove those tips, you want to cover those tips with uh, a piece of tape or I have a metal file and I actually file them down so that they're nice and smooth. To insert the frame, we are going to need to remove some of the stitching, the stitching just here in between those two lines of top stitching in your in your channel just at the end seam here where it doesn't show. So be very careful because you only want to remove those stitches. You don't want to tear your fabric and you don't want to remove the top stitching. And you don't need a huge opening for the frame because it is quite thin. And you insert into the opening. it's being naughty because I'm on video. Normally these just slide right in. Isn't it always the way? There we go. Okay, so slide it in all the way. Open my zipper. Okay, so you want to make sure that that frame is all the way in. Okay, and then when you've inserted one, you can insert the other. Now I didn't cover these or file them down. I'm going to do that um, off camera. But you really don't forget to, if you remove the rubber tips, do not forget to cover those ends so that they don't damage your fabric. And if you'll remember at the very beginning, I told you to have some um, hand sewing needles ready. So now what you're going to need to do, you're going to have to close this tiny little opening. It's not too big of an opening to sew, but you want to uh, sew it shut, making sure that your stitching doesn't sew, doesn't show on the outside. I'll be honest and say that I am a terrible uh, hand sewer. I'm really, it's really not my strength. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to show you how terrible I am at it. Um, and so here's your bag with the frame in place, wide open. And then you want to close it and then you can close your zippers. So here's the reason why I really like using a double pull zipper because I just find it so much easier to open. So here's our bag, all done. I'm going to open the zippers, look wide inside. I'm going to be keeping this one for myself. And here's our pocket. Now uh, you're going to want to give your bag a really good press. I actually uh, go to the dollar store and I buy these rolls of brown craft paper and I stuff my bag with this craft paper and, and then I give it a good press. All